Howdy folks, welcome back to Faded Paint Garage. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be working on our Case 580 Super E backhoe. Um, we've got a cylinder that's puking hydraulic fluid, so we need to rebuild the seals in it. Um, and this particular one is the swing cylinder, but this process is, I think, similar for most all hydraulic uh, cylinders, um, the high pressure one. So we're going to dig into it here pretty quick. I've already got started on it. I'm going to make sure things are coming apart, but we'll go back over um, what I've done to this point. But the first thing, let's go over what tools you're going to need to do this process. Here are some of the tools you're going to need out, outside of sockets and wrenches and that kind of stuff. So you'll need a good set of snap ring pliers. These are uh, SK7642, but um, just make sure they're a good set and appropriately sized. Uh, there's a snap ring that holds the cylinder in on, as most cylinders are held on with snap rings uh, to hold the pin in. So you need that. You'll need a gland wrench tool here, appropriate size for the the one the gland the, the nut that you're taking out. So this is basically the end of the cylinder that unscrews, and I'll show you in a minute on that. You'll need a breaker bar that to run your gland wrench, and then you need these seal um, installer tools. Super cheap, really basic. You you really got to have these. There's the internal seals on these cylinders are I think pretty much impossible to get in and out with this with these things. And I'll show you how those work in a little bit. Um, but these are cheap set. Definitely get those beforehand. Now I've seen guys take glands out that that not out with like pipe wrenches and stuff. I wouldn't do that. That can do irreparable damage. Buy yourself the right tool. And these have replaceable pins, this particular one. So you take this Allen nut out or this bolt out, and these little things can be replaced or reversed or how, whatever you need to do. And then, of course, you need your set of seals. These are like 20 bucks, you know, for whatever. Make sure you get the right seals for the cylinder you're rebuilding. On this machine, these seals will do the swing cylinders as well as the stabilizer cylinders. Um, I don't know what it costs to have a shop rebuild cylinders these days, but it's literally $20 worth of parts. You know, you might have $150, $200 worth of tools, maybe, you know, borrow some if you need them. Um, so one thing that we're probably going to run into is there's a, and just to preface, there's a nut that holds the, I don't know what the part's called, but it's got all the seals in it. So once I get the cylinder out, the cylinder shaft out, there's a nut on there that last one I did, I had to use a torque multiplier because the nut's on there with extreme torque. Um, so we'll see how this one goes, but just a heads up. Sometimes you can use heat and stuff, uh, big impact gun, whatever. But um, depending on the size of the cylinder, I did a loader cylinder and everything came apart. But the last swing cylinder I did uh, took took a torque multiplier, which I don't have. I had to borrow that, but uh, just a heads up. So let's go back out to the machine, and I'll show you what I've done so far. So what the one we're working on is this cylinder. You can already see it's, it's undone, um, but I took the bucket, swung it all the way around, and I chained it to the front. So I, I don't think that would move, but it could move once I've got everything unhooked. Obviously, there's no tension on it, so it's not moving. But just for safety's sake, I pinned that out of the way or chained that out of the way so it couldn't swing around and smash me while I'm working on it. So safety first. And then I bled the pressure off. So once the machine was off, I just hit the pedals a couple times up and back and forth to release any pressure that was on it. Um, then I took the pressure washer and washed this whole area. It's nice, much nicer to do this with a with a clean area, so I definitely encourage you to do that. So once the bucket's chained, pressure's off, then the next trick is to get the pin, um, the snap ring's off the pin, so snap ring. So on this one, the snap ring is up underneath, so you can see I've got the pin already pushed out. But you've got to get under here to unhook the pin. And then once you get the snap ring off, that pin actually just slides up into the boom. What I did is I just got a little bottle jack and I think a bolt to stick on top of the bottle jack. And I just jacked that pin up. Um, you want to make sure that this is, isn't under any tension. You know, if it's bound, it's going to fight you. So, you know, try to get the boom in a sloppy position if that makes sense. So once I was able to drive that up with a bottle jack, um, then this thing just slides over. It just it just can there's 
plenty of room to slide it in and out. And then I took a tie down, a ratchet strap, and just ratchet strapped it back here so that the, it's holding that cylinder tight this way, just so it's not wobbling around when I'm messing with it. Now, on most cylinders, you'll find a set screw that keeps this from turning. So once this is tight, machine shops will usually, or maybe it's from the factory this way, but I don't think so, they'll usually drill right into this seam and install a small screw. And this one had one, and I've already taken it out. You can see half the hole right here. It's because I've already taken the screw out and loosened this nut up a little bit. So that's where this tool comes into play. So this guy locks into these holes, and that's how you loosen this cylinder. Now, these can be a bear cat to get loose, too. I noticed that this one's out uh, here's had some heat applied to it. So be prepared to fight some of these. So uh, the, the machine shop that did this one, I didn't. So heated up this whole thing to get that nut off. So these don't always come apart easy. So just be prepared, you know, for running into some hurdles. So now next step is just going to be, we're going to leave the cylinder in the machine. All the ones I've done so far, if possible, I'll leave the whole cylinder in and just take this piece out. This piece, the, the shaft and the nut, and once you get it out, the, at the packing, I don't remember what it's called, the, the part that holds the seals on the inside. That's usually all that you need to do, um, at least on this one. The other swing cylinder, the loader cylinder I've rebuilt, I've left the cylinder itself in the machine. Um, you can, of course, take it out, but that's, I, I'm not going to put any more work into this than I have to. So, okay, so we'll get that taken out, and then we'll go put it on the bench and move on to the next steps. <laughs> I'd recommend probably not dropping it on the ground like I just did on accident when I was prying it out um, with my He-Man strength. Apparently, a little too hard to fell on the ground. Uh, clean it up, no problem, but I would rather have not done that if I could have. So here we are on the bench. You got it cleaned up a bit. We'll clean it up some more as we go. So this nut right here is the one that, or more of a bolt, I guess, um, that we need to get out. Um, this is a pressure relief pin. So when you drive the cylinder in too much, it'll stop it from destroying itself. Um, so I'll get a big socket on here. We're going to lock the other end of the cylinder in the, in the jaw of this. I've also thought about just going back out, um, outside and pinning this back in the boom with this open and then that the, the boom pin would hold it. So We'll, let's see what we got to do with maybe this will come out with the impact gun. I don't know. So we're going to start that battle here. Um, one thing I like to do when I j stick this in the jaws of the vise is put a little padding in there so it's not marring the, the bushing and stuff in the end of the cylinder there. Okay, so I got my big cordless. I don't have a lot of faith that this is going to loosen this up, but we'll give it a try first. Socket I'm using here is an inch and 13 16 so it's a pretty good size socket we need for this guy. So um, this pin's pretty hard to push in, so I've got my table chalked because I've got wheels on it. So I'm going to give it a go here and see, see what happens. Again, I don't have a lot of faith this is going to do this, but... Nothing so far. Other than everything else is moving. Okay, no good. And I even got the six amp hour battery, so I think a lot to hold on to when it's getting down to the business. So everything else has moved. So I've got a big truck air gun that we're going to try next if I can get all the pieces for it together. So taking lug nuts off a semi truck. I think it's a inch drive or something, inch and something drive. I don't remember what they're. Anyway, let's break that out and give that one a try. All right, let's give this guy a try. 
Um, be honest, I don't know if this is going to do it either. Um, I did this steps last time with the other one, so we weren't able to get it apart until we got the torque multiplier on, on the swing cylinder. The loader cylinder is able to take apart um, with that guy, actually. So let's uh, see if this, could, this guy's got what it takes to save the day here. I don't think that's doing anything. It's loosening everything up. So let's refit our deal here so we don't destroy end our cylinder. Not looking too good, huh? That's all right. We won't give up. We'll just get bigger tools. Okay, we'll try this a little bit more, but it's probably not going to happen. This thing's loud. That thing is being sloppy now. Okay. Let's see what else we got to do here. Make sure I'm going the right way. Yeah. I assume this is not reverse thread. Well, it would be silly. I don't know why it would be. But otherwise, we're fighting ourselves here. Okay, here we go. Let the air compressor charge up. Got the air compressor charged up, so we got max PSIs. Again, I'm not too sure this is going to do any good. We're going to keep trying. Okay, there we go. No, not hand tight. Uh, okay, so I'm going to reset and then I think I'm going to try the breaker bar. I just, I don't really want to bend my breaker bar. So we will, I need to get a different setup for this. Um, so I'm going to do that and then we'll try the breaker bar on it with a big pipe because I can always get a longer pipe, but it'll eventually break something on the end with enough leverage so strike two i don't know i don't i don't love this you guys watching this have probably done this a thousand times and think i'm an idiot but whatever i don't know it's feel free to put your comments down in the comment section so i can maybe learn from you Maybe you're learning from me. I don't know. Let's not break something right now. Okay, we got a nice long piece of pipe here. We're going to see if we can break it. I'm not even putting that much force on it, but down on that end, it's quite a bit. And uh, it feels like, to me, the wrench is bending. So I've got to break a bar on it. I don't want to break my brake bar. So I'm going to give myself a little pipe there so I can see what's going on. <laughs> I don't want to bend up my bar here. Boy, that sucker is tight. Boy. Just, uh, guys got to know when to fold on things, and I don't know where that is. Now, I could probably start putting some heat on that bolt, too. I'm not against doing that, especially if there's some Loctite on it. Um, so we might, we might try doing that next. 
since this is fighting us every step. So, yeah, I think that's about about all I'm comfortable doing. So that's, that's a lot of force. So let's let's throw some heat on it for a while and uh, try it again. I've just got my little heat gun propped up on it. Thought that might be a little safer way to go than to put a torch on it. Um, since the oil, of course, is flammable and all that. So we'll just uh, warm her up slowly with this heat gun for a while and see what that does. Okay, so we've got some heat applied. I don't know if it's enough, but we'll check it and see if it does any good. If not, maybe we'll try a little more. Maybe not, I don't know. Yeah, nothing yet. Whew. Again, I could pull on this a lot harder. I just I'm kind of afraid to. I can get a longer pipe too, but well, you know what I'm talking about. Put a little more heat on it. Okay, so um, while I was applying heat, my father stopped by and I let him know what I was doing and that I might need a torque multiplier the way things were headed. So he ran out and borrowed me one, which is awesome. This is a very expensive tool that I don't own myself. Um, only use one in a blue moon, but um, I might need to pick one up someday. So we're going to put that on it next. That should do the trick. That's, that's taken apart everything I've done in the past. It'll either take it apart or break it usually. But I ran into a small dilemma. The adapter that I was just using on the big air gun to adapt to this socket, I can't find. I don't know what it is. I literally just had it. And it's not on the air gun. It's not on the bench. I'm wondering if it fell off and rolled somewhere while I was doing other things. So um, I had to put pause on it for a little bit and find that guy so I can uh, make some more progress here. Okay, so I found my adapter, and I'm not even going to tell you where I found it because it's a bit embarrassing. It was literally right in front of me the whole time. Um, my wife knows I'm good for that kind of stuff. So, see if I can get this bad boy back on here. Or get it on here. Oh, and then we'll see what we can do. Chain look good. It's got a good bite and all that shit. Take it easy. I don't want something to blow apart here. Oh, I hate that something. Okay. There we go. Holy shit. Did we break something? No, I think it came. All right. That should be good. Easy enough. <laughs> hey, my Nice. Well, that's a multiplier. That's well, that's. <laughs> without a 500 pounds. <laughs> no, that's what I mean. So. I figured it would come if enough. Okay, so we finally got that guy cracked loose. Um, I don't think this swing cylinder's ever been apart. So my guess is that's how tight it was from the factory. Maybe the other one was the same way. I remember we had to really fight it to get it loose as well. Usually this isn't that bad. Like I said, I've done the other ones and just a good impact gun um, takes those apart. So this one might have been assembled back when Andre the Giant was working for Case. I don't know. Anyway, so let's get it rattled the rest of the way off of there. Hey, let's get this guy the rest of the way apart. Making sure we're staying clean as we go. Okay, so this, again, this has that relief thing in it, so um, make sure we remember how that goes back together there, so 
just like that. So we'll set that off to the side. Oh, and then we got a washer here. We'll keep that where it was. And then this should should yeah come right off of this. There we go. Well, it's still warm. That little electric heat gun don't look like much, but um, give it enough time, it it will warm stuff up. And at the end, I don't know how much that helped. Um, I don't think we used heat last time. I think we went right to the torque mu multiplier. So um, just to note, I guess as I take this apart, small end goes towards the shaft, big end all out. Set that there. So that's that. And then this should slide off the shaft. Just like that. And then there's more seals and doodads in there. We'll get to shortly okay so we got my seal tools those don't need to go to reinstall I've got some various hooks and screwdrivers here to pry this these things apart so let's start with the more difficult part which is the inside seal so there are let's see one two is it three in there and then we've got this outside one here. So that one is brittle. That's uh, it's already coming out. So we'll pry it on out here. I think I've got seal remover removal tools, but this is fine. So keep that over there. Let's let it. So we'll get the seals out, and then we'll give it a good cleaning before we put any back. Okay, so that one's easy. So the inside ones, I'll go grab my light real fast. Now I was thinking, and I might be mistaken, that the new seals were a little different than the old seals. I don't remember for sure. So let's pop the one that's closest to me out. I like to keep these all in order because basically you just do it in reverse. And it's a bag full of miscellaneous seals, so you're going to have to figure out by looking at them, which is which. They don't have like part numbers and stuff on them. It's just going to be by looking and comparing, which it's usually pretty obvious, but you'd be surprised. Okay, so that one. So there's the the outer one, I'm going to put that there. It's got a couple little marks in it. Maybe this has been a part before, I don't know. Okay, so let's take that guy. Oop. And it's starting to come apart, which is probably why it leaks. They just get old and dry. Okay, that's a, it's got two... Well, I don't know if there's two. There's a o-ring and a seal all in that one let's see that for what that's worth and she's pretty rotten this i think is usually pretty straightforward i just watched other videos if i run into something because i don't do this very often so a lot of times i forget so i'll just uh jump on the internet and do a little searching. Usually can find an answer. This is not anything new. People have been doing this for a long time. Okay, so this other seal is a, I don't know, it's probably an inch wide. And uh, look at all the dirt. I'm about to clean that really good. Um, so it's got a slice in it. You probably can't see that, but it's it's got a split in it. That's how you can get it in and out. So I'm going to look for that and then try to pry right in the middle. Just spin that guy on out of there. Just like that. So you can see it's got a split in it there. So easy peasy. So that's it for that guy. She's emptied out. And then, okay, well, not completely. we got an O-ring on the outside here. That was it for the inside. Now we do a ring on the outside. That one goes there. 
Okay, so we're going to go and we'll clean this up, clean our work area up, and make sure that we're completely dirt and dust free for reassembly. So I missed one. <clears throat> the outer o-ring has another tiny, or thin rather, um, seal on there. So we'll get that guy off too together. But I think this sits on the outside. But I'll go maybe go double check that to make sure. Okay, I've taken compressed air, blew it all off, made sure the threads are all clean. There's no little debris in there. We'll keep that checking that as we proceed. So let's break into our bag of seals. See what the mailman brought us. Hopefully everything we need. These kits can be a little universal sometimes too, I think, so keep that in mind. Some don't look quite right. So these are should be part of that part, so I'm just leave those in the bag. So that's different pieces. So, yeah, these look a little different, so I might have to do a little there's our outer seal. So uh, we don't need that one right now. That's that inner one we took off, so we got that. Or is that the outer seal? That oh now this is the one that goes here. And then this one goes inside. And that was something I think I had a question for before. Like which side does the cup part go towards? Um, I think it would go towards the this part, I think goes towards what when I when I always say outside, I mean this like that direction. But I might go look that up and double check because I don't remember for sure. And this one was so mangled when I took it out that I don't think I will know which way is which. Okay, so it looks like on this seal here, the rib part goes in, so it would be assembled like that. And then the dust one is like the opposite because it goes like that. So, um, so let's put let's actually put this one in first. So it's going to go right in there. So that's where these tools. Um, so people can fight this in there. I wouldn't bother. These things are dirt cheap. But what I'm probably going to run into is did you remember to buy it before you needed it? So let's see if I remember how to do this. So you stick them in there. And then when you do this, it folds it over. Oh, maybe. If I can. Set it in there just right. So basically, it'll collapse it and then makes it smaller so that you can. Maybe. There's different sizes. I think I got the right one. Cool. Guess I can put it down farther. Maybe that would help. Put it down there. So there we go. So see how it shrinks it up so it'll fit down in there. And then when you release it, easy peasy, I think. Just like that. So not much to that. And then we've got a flat seal with a little groove, so that's that guy there. So that one will go in here. So we, we think we can do, I don't think we need to do the squeezer on this one. I think it can just, it's got that little split in there to make it a little easier to assemble. So that one goes in pretty easy. Now this one, I don't remember. This one, the, this is what I ran into that last time. Like the new seals are a little bit different. So I'm wondering if these two work in conjunction with each other. I might need to go look that up because it's not part of, I don't think it's part of anything else. Yeah, that's a different looking seal. So let's go ahead and put this split one in. So it just slides in there, spread it out, and it'll lock into place. 
It's easy enough there. Okay, so what I found is this one is not used on older cylinders. There's not a groove for it, so we don't need to install that one. I'm going to go over there. to reassemble so we'll start with the inside <coughs> because that was kind of the this so that one bag had this two-piece seal in it so the center one has two pieces so there's a thick piece it goes in first and I usually put a little oil on these and makes them slip together better and we'll want to oil everything before we actually put it back in the machine but um, I'll do that See if we can roll it to that center groove. Make sure my tool's clean here. Trying to ruin it as I'm doing it. There we go. Slip her in there. Okay, and then this one goes in on top of it. It's kind of not two piece, but it's got a little thing on it to, I guess, allow it to flex over everything. And then it'll be able to compress once you see how it kind of can spread. So it try not to break that before it gets into place and relaxes back where it was. There we go. It kind of just locks into place like that. So that one's done. Now the two outside ones, which I believe are the same seal and put a little uh, it shouldn't take that off for nearly we didn't oil on these yet i mean so we'll oil this all up for it goes back in the machine but it's, and there's a groove there i'm just going to put this other groove opposite i don't know if that matters but it's like rings on a engine it's better to not have your slots in perfect alignment so that is that. So that's pretty much it before we put it back together. So now we've got that part done. This part's done. So we just give it a little oil, oil things up a little bit before we slide it back together. And at the end of the day, the only extra part we have is this small seal, which again, what I found is that it is not used in the older style cylinders. There's supposed to be another groove for that. So if I'm wrong, I guess we'll uh, do an update video later on. Um, otherwise, let's get a little oil over here. Yeah, I got my little squirt bottle here of oil. So we'll just do everything a little once over here so we don't tear any seals. It makes it easier to assemble. All that jazz. I think this is actually motor oil, but I don't see it making a difference at this stage. It's just a small amount. But that little seal likes to pop out. You guys are going to have to watch that. that. The big white plastic one doesn't really want to stay where I want it. Let's get some oil. Okay, I think, I think, 
We're ready to put it back together. So I need that stuff. There's a cylinder here. And it's, I wiped it down earlier, made sure it was. Oh, there's actually a lot of junk in there. So something that I missed earlier that I need to point out is there's a check ball in there. So the spring has a check ball to end, so that fell out. So what I've noticed was down in there, all that crud, was a whole bunch of like Loctite. Because it stopped right at the end of the threads. It was in the thread. So that's why that thing was probably so fun to take apart is it had a heavy dousing of um, thread locker on there. So, um, which probably fine. Whoever put it together definitely put it together to stay together so um, job job well done but let's uh, let's not do that putting it back together so I can maybe get it apart again someday or maybe next week when I do something wrong and it doesn't work at all so anyway I think we'll be all right so check ball is gonna go back in there plop probably doesn't need to go in just yet but Done anyway. Okay, I'm going to put a little oil on the shaft here. Make this thing slide together easier. So make sure you put this guy on the right direction. Otherwise, you'll be very sad. Oh, boy, it's slippery. Easy peasy. On the right direction. This will go like this. Do we lose our ball screw around? Nope, ball's still in there. And then we'll clean this up real quick. Oh, I think it's okay. That goes on there. And the hole we go. Okay, well, other than tightening her down, um, we're about done to go put it back in the machine. Now, when I go to tighten this up, I'm just going to realign that hole. It'll be tight, but I should be looking right here is where it's drilled into the main case, so the main body. So I'll just tighten it up until those align, and then I can put that little nut thing back in there. Okay, put that screw back in there. Okay, got my little screw. We'll put it back in there. Hopefully it's lined up right. Okay, then I'll just put the pin back in her and try it out. Okay, so I've got it all back together. The, the battery on my phone died there towards the end, so I guess that's fitting since I didn't show the initial disassembly. Why should I show the final reassembly? Whatever. Anyway, so pretty straightforward. Drove the pin up shoved the cylinder in, pin it back down. Um, I didn't crack any of the hoses loose, so I was just running the boom pedals, uh, the swings, the swing pedals or whatever, to let the air out so I could slide the cylinder. Once you get it in there, it's kind of, it's airtight. So you got to do that to kind of allow some uh, push and pull on the, on the cylinder itself to get it lined back up at the pin. Got the snap rings back on, got it greased there. So we'll fire it up and see if it shoots oil everywhere or if it works. Just run it real easy here. Okay, well, she's still dry, so that's a good sign. Um, well, thanks for watching. Um, we will we'll catch you later.